Hey guys, Trickshot here, and today I'm joined by Makuta. Hi. And today we're going to be doing an interview, kind of Q&A type style thing. Essentially what we're going to be doing, I have around 15 questions lined up, mainly steering towards music production and kind of tear out along the end. Now, if you like Makuta or don't know who he is, then you can go ahead and follow him. Uh, his links will be in the description as well as mine. But anyway, let's get right into the uh, Q&A. Right, question one, uh, what is your biggest inspiration? Probably fucking Murata, honestly. I'm gonna be a generic and say that. A normie. Normie. But another another inspiration of mine is actually uh, this underground producer called DK. D-K-K-A-Y. He is fucking incredible. Uh, and probably Hellasex is the other one. Question two is, uh, when did you start producing and what was the first song you've ever made? So there's two answers to this. Um... I started producing in 2014 when my friend dared me that he could- he bet me five dollars that he could make a better song in GarageBand than I could. I got FL Studio in, uh, in 2017 though. Alright, so, uh, question three is, uh, what inspired you to make music? Um, uh, I wanted to be better than my friend, who also made music. And then, uh, and then when I got FL, it was honestly, um... I've always come from a musical family. My dad is in a band. My dad's always surrounded with me with music. And I just kind of feel like it was a natural progression. I've always been around music. And starting to make my own was just sort of going to happen eventually. But I did hear this one Skrillex song that I really liked. Uh, question four is, uh, where are you from? I, uh, I am from Seattle, Washington in the United States. Question five is, what's your go-to quick chain effects that you'll put on something? And this is from CEO. A, uh, I call this my, uh, thick rack. It is a saturation knob, sound geyser, fruity parametric EQ2, OTT, fruity wave shaper, fruity parametric EQ2 again, and then a ba uh, fruity balance boosting it plus 3 dB. It fucking distorts the ever-living shit out of everything. I, I Did you make that it. after you started making uh, Tarot? Or yeah, have you so always had it, this? Uh, no, I made that, I made it recently. It, um, I use it to, I use it mainly on re-spaces. Question six is, uh, what's your favorite producer? Uh, honestly, my favorite producer might be Odd Profit. Question seven is, how many subs do you have on YouTube, and how did you gain those subs? Um, uh, I have currently 767 subscribers on YouTube, because I made, like, four free FLPs, and they blew up. Question eight is, how do you go about song structuring and arrangement? I almost always start with a drop. Almost always, I will start with a drop, and then usually I'll, I'll, I'll start with a drop. I do things backwards sometimes, because uh, on a few of my upcoming songs, I started with a drop, and then I made a build-up, and then I made an intro, and then I made a breakdown, and then I made a second drop, and then I made a second build-up. I do things all over the place, but... Um, I think that's exactly how I do my songs, too. Yeah, I always, I always start with a drop. How do you go about making like dubstep, rhythm, death step, tarot intros and like kind of choruses and stuff like that? Uh, I have a lot of, I do a lot of uh, orchestral influences, very ambient stuff. I've heard a lot uh, of your I, tracks have a lot of like metal influences as well. Like a lot of guitars, a lot of basses. Uh, yes, Reese's. I uh, recently, especially my recent stuff, I've been doing a lot of metal stuff. That's just because I've been getting decent at playing guitar and so I can actually make shit now. But uh. A lot of influences from all over the place, but I, I don't I don't really like I always go with the dark stuff. I don't really like that peppy happy bro steppy stuff. And so I'll like do a fucking ambient pad and then layer strings over that and then this heavy Reese. I'm pretty sure that's and exactly that's, what you did with uh, our collab vengeance, didn't you? That is exactly what I did with our collab vengeance and then some shitty shitty guitars over it because I didn't know how to mix guitars back then. Question nine is, what is the best way to learn sound design? Um, this is gonna be a shitty answer. Practice. Uh, now, tutorials might seem god tier at first, but at the end of the day, if you want to discover your own style, you just have to mess around. Spend literally, like, do sound design sessions. That's what I do, is I'll sit, I'll sit down, I'll go into FL Studio, and I'll spend three hours just creating sounds. And then at the end of the, that, 
I will save those sounds and I'll eventually use them in projects. And so if you just keep doing that, you just keep creating sounds every day, you'll eventually know what you're doing. Question 10 is, have you ever considered making tutorials for tarot? Uh, I have made probably 20 tarot tutorials, and then I scrapped all of them because I fucking suck at tutorials. But uh, I'm trying, I'm, I'm currently working on a breakdown of a uh, song of mine. Just a tutorial breaking down how I made it. Um, and so yes, I have considered it, and I'm trying to release tutorials. Question 11 is, what inspired you to start producing tarot, and how did you learn? So, I, uh, Murata, Murata was really the person that inspired me to start making tarot. I listened to fucking, I got into Murata late. I listened, I fucking, I got into Murata in literally, like, December 2019. And then, a week later, I made my first tarot song. I learned tarot by downloading a free serum preset pack. And... I just fucking went from there, and I just kind of kept learning how, how people make these sounds, and eventually, I learned how to do it myself. Because for the first little while, for the, first, for the first little bit, I just sort of just sort of stole presets. Question 12 is, what are your favorite sample packs and preset packs? Um, really, uh, my three go-to sample packs are Odd Profits sample pack, which is fucking batshit crazy. I would recommend it. 1000%. Papa Khan's sample pack, which is also amazing. And and then also Sullivan King. Sullivan King sample packs, because those have some really good drums. Question 13 is, what are some tips for getting label releases and getting noticed by big labels? Honestly, just take your shots. I have some big stuff in the works that I cannot tell anyone about. But honestly, like, I fucking, I got my one... I got a couple label releases, literally I just, I sent them an email, and I didn't expect them to say yes, but they did. And so even if you think there is no chance for them to say yes, just try it. Just send them an email with a private link to your song, um, and chances are they will, they will, I mean, if they're good, listen. And then one important thing that I think a lot of people actually skip on is start small. Don't immediately just try to send your fucking song to Never Say Die, because if you have a hundred followers and you've never been on the label before, chances are no label's gonna be interested in you. But if you send something to, like, uh, a smaller label with only a couple hundred followers, and then eventually you can build up from there, and you can get to bigger and bigger labels, you'll eventually get noticed. Question 14 is, how do you go about collabing with other producers? This may be an unpopular opinion. I prefer stems to project files. I, um, I, I think stems are better. So I, I nowadays render stems, even if I'm using, even if I'm collabing with someone else in FL, I will render stems and send it to them. Uh, is there any specific what? reason? No, I just sort of like it more. Um, I, th I think one, it's just a weird thing about my mentality. If I have a project file I'm presented with, I feel like I'm less likely to make changes to it because I just like, I don't want to fuck it up. But if I have stems, I'm really good at working with audio as opposed to working with projects. And so if I have a stem, I could take that and resample that and change that order. I don't know. It just works better for me. The other thing, because you might also be asking how you actually go about getting collabs with people. Just like send people DMs. I don't know. Um... I do all my collabs. Really, I mostly just collab with my friends at this point. I like, I just collab with my circle of friends. But I think Trickshot didn't, Jacob, didn't we meet because like I DM'd you asking if we could collab? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. That's a, yeah, that's exactly how we meet. I DM'd you I asking like, if we could collab. Maybe Literally late fucking late 20, two years ago. 17 probably? Yeah. Uh, you text me, we were asking about a, a collaboration for Future Base that never happened. And I'm happy it ended because we were both dog shit. Yeah, it's true. So anyway, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. All the links to Makuta and the Release the Hound mix that me and him worked on will be in the link in the description. If you guys want to go ahead and check out some of his music and some of his collaborations with other people, then you can go ahead and do that. He's an amazing producer. He's honestly one of the best teachers that I've personally been able to talk to and he's just a great guy all around. So if you guys want to go ahead and uh, go sub to him, then please do. It'll be a great chance for you to learn some nice heavy dubstep from him. 
Anyway, guys, I would like to say by myself. Cliff, anything you want to say? Stream during Phonics, No Mercy, Makuda X, Big Remix. Out now on SoundCloud. Hey! Ah, fuck you. So my birthday was on uh fucking Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. Look at this! Oh Look at yes! This fucking beauty! Oh yes! I should send you. I should send you some shit. I've started recording uh guitar loops. I should oh, send yes. you some. Oh yes, that's a pog.